Hey guys, how are you all? My name is Harshu Devi, friends, and I welcome you back to my video. So in this video, friends, I am going to talk about some important terms of economy which you regularly encounter in newspapers, in news discussions, friends. Also. Whenever we talk about the Basel Three norms, the prompt corrective action framework of the RBI, words like Tier One capital of the banks, Tier Two capital, these we regularly hear. Also, we are hear about two words: this common equity Tier One ratio, then the Tier One ratio. So these are the two ratios that we regularly hear about: Tier One, Tier Two capital. Also, in addition to these. One thing which we hear about is CRAR. CRAR is capital to risk weighted assets ratio. It is also known as capital adequacy ratio. So capital adequacy ratio and capital to risk weighted assets ratio are basically the same thing. So we are also going to talk about this. We are also going to talk about tier one ratio and we are also going to talk about common equity tier one ratio. And each of these things will be clear. If you are able to understand this tier one and tier two capital, so this is presented by me, Harsh Devi, friends. If you want to follow me, the link of my Instagram profile is given in the description box below. Also, I am making this video in English, friends. If you want to watch the Hindi version of the video, the link of that is also given in the description box below. Now, according to Basel Accord, any bank will contain tier one capital and tier two capital. So, if you are going to assess the capital of a bank, capital of a bank means the combined value of all the assets of the bank and these assets are not only in the form of cash they are in the form of cash equities bonds dividends everything you know a whole lot of things comprise a bank's capital and that capital can be divided into tier 1 capital and tier 2 capital and this tier 1 capital it can be further subdivided into additional tier 1 capital and cet1 capital that is common equity tier 1 capital which will give you common equity tier 1 ratio and then the tier 1 ratio so all of these things i will be discussing so first of all we are going to see the difference between tier 1 capital and tier 2 capital now very thing you, you need to know friends that tier 1 capital is a bank's core capital and tier 2 capital is supplementary capital of the bank and when we in add both of these core capital and supplementary capital the combined capital of the bank comes in front of us and that combined capital of the bank is used to calculate the capital adequacy ratio or the capital to risk weighted assets ratio why i am talking about both of these things that you should be very much clear in your mind that there is no difference between capital adequacy ratio and capital to risk weighted assets ratio okay so first of all tier 1 capital tier 1 capital consists of shareholder equity retained earnings now what is shareholder equity friends see you have heard about initial public offering friends so in initial public offerings any company will list its list itself on the stock exchange and will uh, you know introduce its shares in the market the people are going to purchase those shares and that capital will go to the bank which the bank will use in its investment and expansion so obviously whatever any person is investing in that particular bank that becomes the core capital of the bank and there is a catch here friends they see two types of capital are there one is equity one is debt what happens in equity in equity the person who is investing in that particular institution he is having the equity thing that is he is a sort of owner or partner in that institution and when a person is lending someone when debt is there in that case the person who is lending he is not a owner he has just given his money so that becomes debt and debt does not comes under the core capital of a bank okay so equity comes under the core capital of the bank debt will not come under the core capital of the bank and debt means you are taking money from someone and you have to pay interest to him and equity means that someone is investing you in your company to have a share of it so if i am purchasing the shares of say punjab national bank then i am investing in that bank and i am the owner of that much amount of shares of that bank but if punjab national bank is borrowing from me friends then that will be debt in that case i am not the owner of the bank i have just given it money on which i will get interest on shares i will get dividend on equity i will get dividend on debt i will get interest so debt does not comes under the core capital of a bank but equity comes under the core capital of the bank so shareholder equity will come under the core capital of the bank 
then retained earnings will come under the core capital of the bank. Retained earnings, that earnings which remains with the bank. For example, bank is doing operations. So in that operations, it is earning profit. Now, how it earns profit? Obviously, friends, you know, the main business of the bank is accepting deposit and lending money. So when it is accepting deposits, it is giving interest on those deposits to the people who are depositing money in their bank. And the second thing is that bank lends to other people. Okay, so if the bank lends to other people, those people are going to pay interest to the bank. And obviously the people who are paying interest to the bank, that interest rate will be more than the interest rate which bank will offer to its depositors. And the difference of those interest rate will be the profit of the bank. And also obviously bank is involved in a lot of other activities. For example, you know, anything which is earned from share market, that is also property of the bank. Banks are running ATM, so from the ATM business it earns, that is also its profit. And in a lot of other things, for example, the bank sometimes work as an intermediary, as a brokerage in some deal. So in that case, bank gets its, gets its cut. So a lot of other schemes are going on in that bank, gets its cut. So there are a lot of ways of earnings of bank. So those earnings which remain with the bank after paying up all its expenses and expenses will be, you know, maintenance of infrastructure, paying salaries to the employees, maintaining the huge digital infrastructure which is now required in running the banks, computers, branches, buildings. So obviously after doing all the expenses, whatever money is left with the bank, it becomes its retained earnings and retained earnings are also a part of the core capital of a bank. Friends. So this core capital, that is the tier one capital in other words, very simple definition is that even if you are going to lose your core capital, your tier one capital, your normal business operations of the bank will not stop. So despite the fact if you are going to lose your tier one capital, the normal business operations of the bank will go on. Now, when tier two capital comes into play, so suppose you start losing tier two capital. So if you are start losing tier two capital, then your bank is moving towards insolvency because then your normal business operations are going to suffer friends. So basically tier two capital is not as reliable as tier one capital. Tier 1 capital is even more liquid than Tier 2 capital because Tier 1 capital you can immediately liquidate, convert it into cash and use it. But Tier 2 capital is not easy to liquidate. So this is the difference between Tier 1 capital friends and Tier 2 capital. Okay. So according to Basel 3 norms, it is being said that minimum Tier 1 capital of 10.5% is required. That is a bank should at least maintain a tier one capital ratio of 10.5 percent now what is tier one capital ratio till now i have told you about tier one capital what is tier one capital ratio so what is risk for that you need to understand the risk based assets you know that the bank is giving out money to individual borrowers retail borrowers wholesale borrowers businesses entrepreneurs so in that case many times it happens that whatever loan the bank has given out it becomes difficult for the bank to recover interest and the principal amount of the loan. So that converts itself into a risk based assets, which is famously in India known as non performing assets. So these non performing assets become the risk based assets of the bank. Because this is that money which banks feel we are not able to recover the interest and we are not able to recover the principal amount. So the total risk weights assets, if you are going to keep in the denominator, and if you are going to keep the amount of tier 1 capital in the numerator and multiply it by 100, it will be tier 1 capital ratio. And according to the Basel 3 norms, a minimum of 10.5% tier 1 capital ratio should be maintained by a bank. Okay, so if the tier 1 capital ratio is going below 10.5%, then it is not right according to the Basel 3 norms. However, the Basel 3 norms for the time being are not binding upon India. So many banks are actually below this 10.5% threshold. So I hope you got to know it. That is that amount of money which the bank can incur as loss without stopping its business operation. So this is basically tier 1 capital. Now let us have the technical things which are coming in this tier 1 capital. This is paid up capital, statutory reserves, other disclosed free reserves. Capital reserves which represent surplus surrounding of arising out of sale proceeds of the assets, investment fluctuation reserves, innovative perpetual debt instruments, perpetual non-cumulative reference shares, 
so these are coming in tire and capital these are technical things friends no need to get into their definition because for understanding even one of these it will take a lot amount of time then comes the tire two capital friends in this comes the undisclosed reserves and cumulative perpetual preference shares revaluation re reserves undisclosed reserves are coming in this thing friends general provisions and loss reserves hybrid debt capital instruments such as bonds long term debt capital instruments hybrid means those capital instruments which are a combination of equity and bonds and debt debt capital instruments means that you have taken the money in borrowing so it, they don't come under the core capital of a bank so basically tier 2 capital when comes into play this means the bank is moving towards insolvency because it is supplementary and not as reliable as tier 1 capital because tier 1 capital is that amount of losses which the bank can suffer without stopping its normal business operations okay there is one more point here where this tier 1 and tier 2 difference will be clear to you you can see here friends tier 1 tier 2 tier 1 consist of common shares tier 2 consist of debts bonds then optional optional fully convertible debentures comes into tier 2 if you know about this ofcds you would be knowing this i will be i will be telling about ofcds in a separate video i don't want to bring that here then in tier 1 you can see that these are highly liquid instruments which can be readily converted into cash how are the tier 2 capital it is difficult to convert into cash immediately okay so basically tier 2 is supplementary and tier 1 is core now if you are going to calculate this capital adequacy ratio or you can say the crar capital to risk weighted assets ratio so what is happening friends that you are going to write the combined capital of the bank in the numerator that is tier 1 capital and tier 2 capital so i write tier 1 capital and tier 2 capital in the numerator divided by risk weighted assets in the denominator and multiply by 100 this will come out as the capital adequacy ratio or capital to risk weighted assets ratio so this is crar you should have known about it friends then i have already told you about the tier 1 ratio which here i told you that tier 1 capital divided by the total risk based assets then comes the cet1 ratio now what is cet1 ratio now here you have to understand one further classification friends the tier 1 capital also can be further divided into two types common equity tier 1 capital and additional tier 1 capital now common equity what's the difference between common equity tier 1 capital and additional tier 1 capital for that you need to understand what this additional tier 1 capital is so these are defined as instruments which at this point of time are not equity but when situation arises they can be converted into equity so are this they are basically contingent convertible that is in contingency they can be converted or they are basically a sort of hybrid security because when some sort of event or emergency triggers they can be converted into equity so there is here the additional tier 1 capital funds they contain contingent convertible securities also known as cocos so when actually these additional tier 1 capital it is actually kept for this time only see banks are not going to gain anything on this additional tier 1 capital so they don't have any reason to touch this additional tier 1 capital in normal circumstances because they are not gaining anything on this amount but when a situation arises when the company is in sort of a financial crisis in that case the banks will touch that capital because that capital in such a scenario can be converted into equities and used in emergency so it is also a part of the core capital of the bank because when time comes it can be converted into equity and apart from additional tier 1 capital what comes under the tier 1 capital it comes common equity tier 1 capital which contains the common shares issued by the bank the retained earnings as i have already told you then whatever the subsidiaries of the bank are the shares issued by those subsidiaries will also comprise a common one capital this this is common equity tier 1 capital and this accumulated other comprehensive income a lot of things are coming under this aoci so that will also come under the core tier 1 capital that is the common equity tier 1 capital so when this common equity tier 1 capital which does not includes the additional tier 1 capital so when this cet1 capital is divided by risk based assets and multiplied by 100 we get the cet1 common equity tier 1 capital ratio and the basel 3 norms has divided uh, decided the limits of this tier 1 ratio capital to risk weighted assets ratio and this common equity tier 1 ratio so all of the you know benchmarks have been decided by basel 3 also and also by the prompt corrective action framework of rbi so when these norms are you know uh, the point is being 
uh, crossed, the threshold is crossed, then RBI comes into play. And according to the Basel 3 norms, so Basel 3 norms are actually very harsh, friends. India is a developing country and for India to grow, it is very important for developing countries to grow more. So this is one condition, friends. Okay, so in this case, what is required is that India cannot completely adhere to the requirements of Basel 3 norms. And that is why India has bought in its own prompt corrective action framework of RBI because adhering to the Basel 3 norms will require India to keep more capital in reserves and more capital in reserves will mean less capital in the market which India at this point of time doesn't want because it is in an expansionist mode. It is a developing country. It wants more capital in the market so that people borrow more. By borrowing more, they will set up more industries, more entrepreneurship will be promoted, more jobs will be made. So this is the trajectory on which India is moving. So India at this point of time is not completely adhering to the Basel 3 norms. But yes, it has set up some standards under the PCA framework to check bad health of a particular bank. So I hope this video was helpful for you friends. You got the point which I am trying to tell. If you have any doubt, you can ask me in the comment section below. Thank you for watching this video and your patience friends. Please subscribe to my channel and have a good day. Bye.